Today, we are going to dive deep into how to play voice exercises on piano. I know this is the stuff of nightmares for some people. Maybe it's something you've struggled with a lot and your piano lessons or classes that you took in college just didn't prepare you for this at all. Or maybe you don't have these skills at all and you know that it's time for you to get them so that you can go into the world and make more money and get more gigs and be happy. I'm Brenda Earl Stokes. I'm the owner and creator of Piano and Voice with Brenda. I make creative and practical resources for singers, pianists, and music educators. So this tutorial is part of my Piano for Singers series where I teach the exact skills that singers need to provide the foundation for musical and professional success. Voice exercises or vocalises as they're known are a must for every singer regardless of your genre or level. These are the patterns that you will use to warm up your voice and build your technique. Mastery of these patterns on piano will empower you to teach voice lessons, warm up a choir, or even a cast of singers in a theater production. My goal in this tutorial is to give you a simple and effective way to build these skills you need as soon as possible. All of the exercises I'm going to show you in this lesson are built from the first five notes of the major scale, and I can tell you with all sincere honesty, as a voice teacher who has taught hundreds and hundreds of singers over the course of the past 25 years, I use these exact exercises for around 75% or more of every single lesson I teach. I'm teaching you the real stuff. Let's get started. So to get started, we need to work on our five note major scales. And I know people go scales and then they panic and they go running into the woods. Don't leave. <laughs> You're fine. You're safe. All we need is the first five notes of the major scale. That's all we need. And what's great about them is if you think about them intervallically, then you don't have to worry about the key signatures and all of that kind of stuff. So the first thing to remember is we've got to just have a look at our half steps on the piano. So when you go from one note to the immediate next one in line, you're moving by half steps and two half steps make a whole step. Okay, so if I'm going to play a whole step from an A, that's a B. If I'm going to play a whole step from a C sharp, that's a D sharp. Or here it says E flat because it's the app I'm using, but we get the gist. All right, so that's the thing to remember. Now, every major scale is made up of exactly the same makeup. And for the first five notes of the major scale, you're going to go a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step. So if I'm in the key of C and I start on a C, then I'm going to play a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step. All right? And then just go back down. Now notice I'm playing my first, second, third, fourth, fifth finger. These five notes are going to be played by your first, your five fingers exactly in order. Okay? So let's try this in another key. Let's start on an A. Now we're going to do a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, and then go back down. All right. Now let's do it starting on a G flat or F sharp. I guess my app is telling me a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step. All right. So that's the simple, easy peasy way to learn your five note major scales. Now, in order for you to be able to master them, what mastery means is that you're able to play these without a lot of effort and without having to look excessively at the piano. Because remember, the goal of this is not for you to become a piano ninja right away. You can become a piano ninja after you ma master these. What we want you to be able to do is play these and either focus on your own singing or actually make visual contact with whoever, whatever singer or choir or cast of music theater theater singers that you are teaching the music to or or warming up, right? So if you're warming up a section of a chorus because you're the section leader, that you can do these exercises without fumbling and, and making a ton of mistakes. So here's how you're going to practice it. As we do these exercises, you're going to be going up by half steps, right? Because that's how we do the voice exercises. So guess how we're going to practice it? You better believe it all of these exercises you're going to practice up and down by half steps so let's do just the five note scale together and we're going to start on the key of c remember we've got the whole step whole step half step whole step 
good. Now we're going to go up a half step and do the same thing on D flat or C sharp. And excuse the enharmonic equivalence of my app here. So there's a D, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. And then on E flat. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. And then starting on E, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Right? And you're going to go up and down all of these until you make it all the way up to C and then you're going to do the same thing going up and down and up and down. Now if you are newer to the piano, piano is new to you, you're not super confident or you've done this before but it's been a long time, I would say do like three or four keys a day and really nail them. You don't have to practice this for hours, you can practice this for five minutes a day and you'll get a lot of, of, of energy out of it or practice five minutes a few times a day and you can write out the keys in a row or just keep track of what you're doing and do a few keys at a time until you can really nail it. Because once you can do these five note scales, I'm gonna show you next just how many exercises you can play that are gonna sound so great and are gonna be so easy to play. So now that you've practiced playing these five note scales, we're gonna set it up so that you're used to the rhythm of what these voice exercises work in in action. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to play the chord, the triad, which is very simply the root, the third, and the fifth of the five note scale. It's right inside your hand. So you're going to play that triad and then you're going to play the exercise. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Then you're going to play the chord again. All right. Does that sound familiar? That's what we do. So you're going to play the triad. Then you're going to go e then play the chord again. Now you've got to go up a half step, just like that. And you're going to go E, play the chord, and then play the new key. See that? And then play the key that you were just in, and now go up a half step. All right. Now, because you've practiced the five note scales, this shouldn't be that big of a deal to do. But again, give yourself a little bit of time to work them through. And then once you've gone all the way up, you're going to come back down again. Back down to B. You play the triad and then go back down again. Exactly. So that's the first thing that you want to practice. Next, we're going to go into a series of voice exercises that are based on this five note scale that you can use for pretty much anything. So now I'm going to show you eight different voice exercises that I use all the time that use the five note scale that we've just worked on. And remember what our protocol is, is you're always going to play the chord first and then you're going to play the pattern. And so not surprisingly, my first pattern is actually just the five note scale. So you play the chord, you go up the scale, and then you play the chord again. And then go to the new key. different variations of that. Another thing that you could do with this one is to do the five note scale more than one time. So you play the chord and you could go e I mean you could do any number of variations of that. And so again a very very simple thing to play that I play in voice lessons all the time. Our second example is that we're going to play a major triad outline and all we're going to do, play the chord and then you're going to go, right? Just like that. That's all you're going to do. So play the chord and you could go, no, 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 no,
how easy that is. You can use any vowel. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can come back down again, okay? You can do this legato as we were doing it, smooth, or you could do it as staccatos. I mean, any number of different ways that you want to articulate it or vowel sounds or, um, or syllables will all work great for this. Exercise number three is playing an arpeggio. And I know this looks like it falls outside the scope of the five note scale, but the top note is just the bottom note repeated. And so in this case, you're gonna play the chord and then you're gonna go one, three, five, eight, five, three, one. So I'm saying the names of the notes as they appear in the scale. The root of the chord, the third, the fifth, and then the octave above, right? One, three, five, eight, five, three, one. Now, I'm also going to show you my fingering, and this fingering is going to be the same in every single key. So don't fudge your fingerings. I'll know it, and I'll come and get you. So you want to play the thumb, the second finger, the third finger, the fifth, the third, the second, the first. The reason that we want to do this is because it's the easiest way that fits kind of ergonomically in your hand. Right, this fourth finger means that you won't have accuracy. Can you see the squish that's going on, the stretch? And you don't have enough room between your fourth finger and your fifth finger for you to play it accurately. So this is, again, I'm not a big st stickler on fingerings for the most part, but these ones, it really makes a difference. So you can go, no, 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 no. Ha, 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 ha. Glad, 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 glad. You could do anything that you want. You could do it legato. You could do it staccato. You could do it twice. All of that will work great with this arpeggio. Now, my fourth example here is a five note major scale with the triad outline. Again, we're combining our first one and our second one together to make this one. And it goes. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. I mean, any number of things that you want to do with this works great. Straw phonation, lip trills, whatever you want to do. Number five, we've got a five note descending scale, which again, once you play it in your hand, ha, 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 hee, yeah, 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 yeah of these there's a, a variation of this that you could do, do that I've done with kids before ha 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 laughing is contagious five 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 four three two three one maybe you're familiar with that one and you can go all around and practice that exercise as well some other voice exercises that are great for flexibility that use these same four, five note scales um, are this one one, five, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. One, five, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. One, five, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. Good. Now, another one that I use this one very often. One, one, two, three, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Let me show it to you again. One, one, two, three. Three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, one, two, three, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. And then one more for flexibility that works really great. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. So those are eight exercises that I use all the time that are based just solely on those five note major scales. Now I'm going to give you some advice on how to make sure that you're playing this in the most efficient way possible. The first thing you want to be careful of is to not play too loud. And that is something I see as a mistake all the time as people hammering away at the piano while someone is trying to sing on top. It's not a great way to get somebody to be able to make their best sound. Even if you're accompanying a large group of people, you don't want to be hammering away. So there's two things that you can do. You can just physically play softer or you can turn the volume down 
on your keyboard. I mean, so obvious, but people never do it. Or you can use the pedals if you're on a real piano. And so the panel, the pedal all the way to the left um, on most pianos is the soft pedal, and that will make the pedal very soft. And on my upright piano that I have in my studio, I have actually a practice pedal that brings felt down over top of the um, hammer so that it doesn't play as loud. So if you don't have as much physical control over your hands or you're not able to play much softer, I strongly recommend that you do that. And it'll make the whoever you're accompanying um, not have to strain so much and it will also be easier on your ears as well. Number two is do not use the damper pedal. Don't do it. I know it's tempting. We want to use the damper pedal. It helps us. That's the sustain pedal. Don't use it because what it does is it clouds up the sound. It makes the sound louder and fuzzier and harder to hear. And if you're using a real piano, then what you're doing is you're allowing the strings to stay open and undampered, which means that it's going to get murkier the more that somebody sings. So that when um, I've got the pedal down and somebody sings, the strings are going to vibrate sympathetically, which just adds to the mess of the noise. So those are two things that I advise never you do. While you're doing these exercises, you want to make sure that you're very mindful of your posture and your hand position so that you can avoid injury and make your best sound. Um, I have a video here that's all about po piano posture, which is really great. I think you'll love it. You should check it out. And I have another one on hand position, which I will also leave up here for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found something worthwhile and that you are finding a solution to needing to play voice exercises on piano. If you enjoyed this, it was helpful for you. Leave me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what your takeaway was. And if anything surprised you in the video, you can also let me know what other content you'd like me to cover. If you could also take a moment and subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. I'm trying to grow my channel to get more helpful information out into the world to help my fellow singers. If you want to know more about me, you can check out my website, pianoandvoicewithbrenda.com. There you'll find a ton of great resources and you can learn more about how you can work with me either by scheduling a private lesson or checking out my online membership called the versatile musician thank you so much for watching and happy practicing